All right, so hello everyone. So today we are going to be making a two pound bowl. We're going to start with a two pound bowl of clay. We're going to make this bowl and then we're going to trim it. We're also going to talk a little bit about um, some of the different shapes that these bowls kind of come in and maybe what they would be best for. All right, so let's set this aside. Let's just look at some bowl examples just so just to start off. So here I have a I have a pile of bowls here and we're just going to look at some different shapes. So today we're going to really focus in on bowls that really I would say have a really narrow bottom that were a rounded bottom. So what we're not going to look at, we'll save this type of bowl for a different day are these type of bowls where they have what we call I call a flat bottom and they go flat for a little bit. We're going to show this type of bowl in a different session so that's a nice big bowl but we'll set these aside so between these two i always think of these two bowls as the major two bowls and how i think about it and then when i present them to my students a round bottom bowl or a flat bottom bowl or a, i guess we call it a pointy bottom bowl maybe sometimes and then a, and a flat bottom bowl so let's just look at some examples of what these kinds of bowls are these round bo bottom bowls or pointy bottom bowls so this is a rice bowl and you can see that just by its design a rice bowl like this always has a very narrow um, bottom and that it turns pretty quickly and changes direction that's to serve the purposes of a rice bowl and what it needs to do meaning that it holds rice and then the at least this bowl is a japanese type bowl that it's really designed to have rice with chopsticks and so the design of the bowl fits with what it needs to do because at the end of the meal or when you're finishing your bowl of rice it doesn't um, you don't really use a spoon, so it's hard to get the rice out. So this narrow bottom bowl helps our, uh, last those last bits of rice really clump together. And so it's actually really easy to pick and pull that rice out at the end. And you can see what are the characteristics of this rice bowl? Well, number one, it's relatively thin and light, right? You can see that it has a very beautiful, consistent curve coming around here. And the foot is really narrow. And that's just one of the characteristics. And a lot of times the foot has this, um, is cut in at a counter angle. You see that how the, this comes in and has a counter, uh, an counter angle kind of angle to the foot. And we're going to trim one of these on my bowls today. But then you can see that it has a nice, um, thing. So also one characteristic, you can see how usually this curve comes around and then that curve continues through the foot and then pops back out again. Really light, really beautiful bowls, very nice. So let's go up to something different. So this is another kind of bowl and you can see that this bowl actually is a lot steeper, right? In it's the slope of the side. So this bowl is more upright, right? And it still has a really narrow foot in there. This has been wood fired. Whew, what a gorgeous piece this is right and then you can look this bowl hat was has wad marks on the inside so there was probably another bowl shape just like this stacked inside the kiln you can see that this bowl has a more solid foot they didn't really follow the rule of the other one where it's trimmed out and this adds some strength leaving this foot a little bit more solid adds some strength to this bowl so that it can withstand the wood firing and for that length of firing also i believe they do that so that when they stack the other bowl on top there's a good area to purchase that um the next bowl on where this guy see that foot would just be too narrow to stack another bowl on top it just would have a hard time um, oh, and so the steep sides would make this bowl slightly different for other for some of the things that you would eat out of. Put that was a side. So look at this one. Ooh, this is a nice one. So this has more of what I would call a rounded bottom and less of a pointy bottom to it. So you can see that it has a nice full. It's almost like a half semicircle in there. Right, and I would still call this a rounded bottom bowl, right? And then it has a little bit of rim and you can see the way they glazed it, they follow this beautiful curve. Let's look at the foot. Yep, nice beautiful foot coming across there. And because this is kind of a wider form coming across here, this foot is also wider coming across, which is very appropriate for what they're trying to do here. This is the bowl here that I'm gonna make for you right now. And this is a finished version. And you can see it has a pretty narrow, it still continuously curves all the way around. There's no real flat spot. It doesn't really have a flat bottom. Let's look at the foot. So once again, foot is relatively 
um, narrow for the overall body, right? So a lot of times I shoot for the foot is about a third or less the, than the total width of the pot. So if I take this foot, stick it over here and over here, right? That makes the foot really narrow, um, but it also, right? But it, that's this kind, this kind of bowl, you can pick it up handle it really nicely. It's really a noodle bowl. What I would consider this as an udon or ramen bowl. Let's look at it from the side, right? And the, there, there are several issues with this kind of bowl. Like this isn't really necessarily like a good ice cream bowl or something because you might blob ice cream like on way up on the side, right? You put three or four scoops of ice cream in here. Let's say you're want a lot of ice cream right and then if you get your spoon right and you're digging around for that ice cream along the side here right that bowl will tip over right so this wouldn't be a good kind of bowl for something that you really need to dig around and scrape around for something for but um, for something like noodles or something like that or rice this would work right so let's make some all right so i have my two pound ball of clay so i've measured it out I always measure out my clay before I start. And I already know that for the way I throw and everything, two pounds works out really good for this. So here we go, throw this down. If you have any questions, just um, put some comments, throw some comments in there, right? Hello, Teresa, I see your comment, that's awesome. So I'm just doing some, like what I would call like pre-centering. I'm just trying to see if I can kind of get it more into the middle. So here, I'm just going to push that side in because that's the side that's sticking out some. So that's pretty centered, right? And I haven't done any work yet. The minute you add water to the clay, the clay starts getting soaked and the, this timeline starts happening where you, the clay is always getting a little bit weaker. So by waiting to add water and kind of helping getting it into the middle kind of helps me out for how much work I need to do coming up here. So I'll wet it down now and I'll push it down, just make sure it's down. And so we're gonna throw a bowl. So I'm always in my mind, keeping in mind, <laughs> always in my mind, keeping in mind what I'm trying to make. So that how I started with, how big do I think a ball of clay do I need? Two pounds, I wedged it up really good. Now when I'm throwing, I'm always trying to think, how wide do I need this to be when I am finished, right? Before I open. So. That's what I'm thinking now as I'm centering. So I'm gonna center this guy up and center this guy down. There we go, there. So I might have to do this three times up and down. That's pretty normal. Up and then down. There we go, All right? So there, so we're just looking at it. So that's looking pretty good, pretty centered, but just for insurance sake, let's go up and down one more time. Uh, uh, and then back down. There we go. Oh, thank you, Holly, for tuning in. It's good to see you. Thank you for joining the stream. So now I am ready for prepping the bowl, right? So up to now, I'm just centering. So now I'm going to start smashing it down, prepare my mound from opening. So here, I'm going to push it down flat a little bit. So I do this part where I use the flat part of my hand to kind of push this down like this there. I make it kind of just square sided flat top thing when I do this. So now I'm getting thinking about the major choice I have to make here is, is this wide enough, right, to make the form that I want? So I'm going to make a cylinder shaped form, but it's going to flare outward. So is this enough to support what I want to do? And I say, sure, let's go for it. So then I'm just going to dive down in. So let's go, let's get a really good look at how I open just for kicks. Right, so we're gonna really get this baby in here close so you guys could see what I do. So when I, I always use maybe my middle finger to open and I open just, I dot drilling down straight. I'm always off to the side a little bit here like that. And I just push down like that, start my opening. There we go. So I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna stop maybe this width, my pinky width from the bottom. And that's the, the hope is to do that. So here we go, pinky width, pinky width. There we go. So, but I never know, right? So I'm going to find my needle tool and stabby and checky. Check the bottom. So there, so you can see that I'm a little bit deeper. I have a little bit more space. So I am going to go down just a little bit more. Here we go. So down just a little bit more. And now I'm going to widen out a little bit. So there's a couple of tricks here when you widen. Let me get my samples out. Oh, wait, where did my samples go? 
Yeah. Give me a second here. I had my samples out just a second ago. Where did they go? Sorry about this. All right, so we're going to have to do it without my sample. So when we make this kind of bowl, we are going to make this, and this is what we call a round bottom bowl. Okay. All right, I found them. So this is what we're going to call a round bottom bowl. So this bowl has a rounded shape, right? So this very center is the lowest, thinnest part of the bowl, okay? And then as I go out, you see that it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker because we are establishing that roundness right now. So this part, as I open up this form here, right, this center part will be the thinnest. And as I round it, I'm going to go up, 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 and leave more clay behind as I go wider. So let's do that right now. So now I need to leave as I go up, as I go back, I'm going to leave more clay behind. So pull back. And then as I go back, I'm leaving more clay behind. So let me clean up the water in here so you can see what's going on. So there. So if you can see, it's hard for you to see, but that is the lowest part. And I've already started leaving more clay behind as I go back. So I'm going to keep doing that till I get to the near the edge out here. Leaving more clay, leaving more clay, leaving more clay, leaving more clay, leaving more clay. So there we go. So now I'm getting close to the part where I need to throw. Now I've left too much clay behind and I do that a lot for when I demonstrate just to emphasize low, high, leave more clay. So I'm going to just push that back down to the way how I think it needs to be. So here we go. I'm just going to push that down a little bit more right there so there so that is the establishment of my curve here so let's just look at this example here right i've already established that curve coming up on the inside i need to set that curve now so now i get to try to throw these walls okay so let's back this off and we'll show you what's going on with when I throw or raise the wall. So when I raise the walls, so let's just think about how you raise a cylinder, right? So when we raise a cylinder, we have our hand position, go boom, and then we go up, boom, we go up and we raise that cylinder. But for a bowl shape, right, a cylinder is straight up and down. And I could still make one of those, but remember a bowl shape needs to come out like this all the way around. So I could try to throw a cylinder and push it out, but that's really stressful on the clay, it's hard it's just a lot of work, it's hard to do, and it's you wanna make this process as easy as possible. So, and so that if you can make this setup part, if you can do this part easier, you have more energy to focus on doing a better job. So what we're gonna do is try to make this easier by throwing the cylinder out. So it's not really a cylinder, it's gonna flare out at a certain angle. So when I throw, I clamp down like this and I go up, but when I throw this bowl, I'm gonna, since I want it to flare out, Boop, I'm gonna turn this whole operation over and then come out rather than cylinder up, bowl, I turn this. So this outside hand goes lower, this outside inside hand goes higher and I press in this exactly in the same way and I come out, up and out like that. So let's put this, put this down, put this down. Here we go. So I'm going up and out. You see that? Come, 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 come. There we go. There we go. So there I raise it a little bit out. So let's just take it. So you can see how it's starting to flare outward. Let's look on the inside. Yep. So that's looking okay. So the one thing you got to watch out for when making this type of bowl is really don't be too aggressive when you push in here. Because I've already established a beautiful curve here. I could push really hard from the inside and I'll end up digging like a trench right in here, right? That's lower than this part here. And that will cause problems because I would love my bowl to be a nice, beautiful, consistent curve right there. So here I'm going to push. I'm not really going to push on the inside. I'm going to push more from the outside. And then so when I push on the outside, this inside hand is just going to resist the clay coming, trying to force its way in. So this hand kind of waits until it feels pressure from the outside. And then we push together and then we go. Okay. Here, so I'm going to dig down here. So 
this part down here is the thickest. So I'm going to make sure I push harder down here because I really want to thin this area out a little bit more because I want to get some of that clay up and into my bowl. That just allows me to make a bigger bowl for less clay, starting clay. So here I'm going to wet it down again. I kind of, there we go, wet it down on both sides. And then I'm just going to raise it up again. So pushing way down here, dig, 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 dig. And then I start going up. So that, there we go. So that inside hand is mainly just pushing back against that force from the outside. There we go. So you can see that that bowl shape is starting to happen. So I'm getting kind of two things in one, right? I'm getting my cylinder or what? cylinder up in the air but it's also getting to look like a pretty good bowl already and that just means that there's less work for me to do later because sometimes if sometimes if you're good feeling good that day you'll throw this bowl and it'll already be the right shape that you need right when you're done so let's do it one more time let's go at this thing let's just change the angle a little bit so i'm gonna squeeze here let me wet this down again I'm dumping a lot of water on here because I'm talking so much. So here we go again. Squeeze from both sides. Squeezing way down there. I'm going to wet that down again. Here we go. And here we go. Up. See Daisy? There. So, so I'm not going to use too much pressure here at the rim. I'm taking it easy when I get to the rim. So you can see that. It's looking pretty good. I think I have one more raise I could do out of this. I got to be careful because this part down here, if that gets too thin, this is the part that collapses a lot is right down here near the bottom. So I can, usually I leave that place just a little bit thicker. That's pretty normal. Let's go again. Here we go. So push, push, push. There we go. Nice. So that bowl's feeling pretty good right now. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so now I'm gonna start cleaning up some water and let's just get a good look at what we have, okay? So clean up the water on the inside, just mop this down, mop this down the outside. And then right now it's a pretty even thickness from in, inside and out. It's thicker down here and that's pretty normal, right? But it's a pretty even thickness to about here and then it starts getting a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker. So let's just look at what's going on here. So if I were to cut this in half, right? I would get something that looks a little bit like this right now. So it's about the same thickness, same thickness, same thickness. And then right about here, it starts getting a little bit thicker, a little bit thicker. It's actually kind of good to leave a little bit of thickness right here so that, um, cause this is the part that's gonna fail when you, if you start pushing this clay around a little bit, cause it has to support all this weight. And this is kind of the transition area between kind of going vertical and kind of turning horizontal. And those transition areas have a hard time. So let's just look at this. So I have a little teaching aid so that this, right, is is my little cardboard is my little cutout of that bowl here right so this bowl here is basically this shape kind of spun around in space so we'll just use this from now on because um, this is harder to deal with so now what I'm there's a couple ways we can finish this bowl I can just throw this bowl and just use my fingers to help create the shape so let's do that first so I am mainly now concerned with the way how the shape looks on the inside I'm not, I don't really pay attention to the outside of the bowl. The outside of the bowl we can trim later. All right, so we'll poke this up. And so here I could just do this with my hands. Let's just do it from here for now. So here I could just go from the inside and instead of trying to throw it thinner, I'm just gonna try to trace the shape out of the bowl, trace the shape that I want with the bowl out with my hands. Go like that. So here we go, trace the shape out. So I'm just mainly gonna push out down here some and I'm just going to trace the shape out with my finger. So I pushed out so I can change the shape of the bowl. So now little changes mean a lot with these sort of forms, meaning, and you'll see that as I change the form, what we would do with it, what we're going to, um, what we would eat out of it, how much volume it will hold. It will all change very quickly depending on what I do. So now you see how this bowl now goes straight up and down more. It's more vertical here. Hmm, that changes it. So what we're going to do next is we're going to start using a rib. So how do we need the rib while we're throwing? So this little guy here is my example of how we would use a rib. So as this, we, as this bowl is spinning, I'm gonna take this rib and push it against the side and that will help 
And I usually start from the top and as it's spinning, I push it down and I go down and I, the first few times I actually go all the way down into the bottom. Now, one thing you're gonna note is that this part here of the bowl is supported right here by this part. This part of the bowl here is supported by this clay underneath. So this part of the bowl right here, way up here is very weak. You see how weak that is? It's very weak. So a little bit of pushing up here when I'm coming down goes a long way. It's push, 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 push. But when I get down to here, which would be inside here of the bowl, right? That part is supported by this. It moves much harder. It's much harder to move. So when I get down there, I have to take, I have to slow down, take longer to push that area down if I want to change the curve there, okay? So push, 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 light, 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 hard, 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 goes through there. I mean, harder, I guess, harder, 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 harder. The one thing that you can get wrong is if you push hard too early, this part of your bowl will end up sagging downward, boop, and you'll end up with this weird bump. You come along and then there'll be a dip right here and then the rest of your bowl. So they call that the beginner's bump and that's why it happens is because you push too hard or this area here isn't strong enough on your bowl so it sags. So here we go. We're gonna push this bowl out. So I don't really look at the outside of the bowl anymore for the till the very end. So here, let's just get a good look at it from up here. I'm trying to get a good view of this here for you guys. Goodness, this thing, there we go. There, so we're gonna try, <laughs> this is really hard to coordinate. All right, there we go. So we'll try to get a good view of this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rib, I'm gonna push it out as it goes around and the bowl will slowly change. So light, 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 light. And then here I can push harder, 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 harder. Harder, harder, harder. There we go. So I scraped off all that clay there. Let's back you guys off a little bit. So then we'll go again. So as this bolt, as this changes, it changes how much volume will hold, how vertical the sides are, what I would use it for, and everything. So here I'm going to spend a few seconds concentrating on the part where the bowl transitions into this area. I'm trying to try to make this transition area between where the wall is and to where the base is look really good. So I'm going to spend some time down there because you've noticed that I didn't really spend any time compressing the bottom of this bowl yet because I do it now while it's open because then we come down like this, smooth, smooth, smooth. Just trying to make that bowl look really good right there. Okay, so that looks really good. So let's talk about overall shape of the bowl and what we're going to do with it. I always think to myself that I always want to make pottery for the types of foods that I like to eat. Because let's say I don't eat much meatloaf or whatever, right? I'm not the person to make a meatloaf bowl because I don't eat it. I can't test it out to see if it's a good thing. We eat a lot of noodles. So I love making noodle bowls because I have a pretty strong opinion and I can tell right away if I like eating noodles out of those bowls. So I like to be able to make the kind of bowls for the things I like to eat and then we fire them and then we use them and then I see, I can evaluate if they're good or not. So if you don't know what to make, make stuff for the things you like to eat. So let's, but let's look at this bowl and let's just see if it, how it looks. So right now this is a very usable bowl and I could use it for all sorts of things, right? But let's change the shape and you'll see that little changes mean a lot, little changes. So let's just push out this rim and just see how the feeling and the, what we would use this bowl for changes. So let's just push out the rim just a little bit, right? So I instead, so you see how just that little change changed a little bit for how the bowl would be used. And I didn't do hardly much. Let's do a more dramatic change and let me just push this whole thing out and down more. And we'll just take a look at how it changes. So here I'm pushing this down. Now you guys are getting a good view of the outside because that's easier for you guys to see on the camera, but I, and you guys could see the dramatic change in how the bowl might be used, right? So that's a much more open bowl now. So it still would be good for a lot of the same things, but as the bowl opens up, if I had to take this, whatever, let's say I had to fill it up with hot soup and fill it up pretty close to the rim. As the bowl gets more open, it gets harder to carry that soup to the table. If I'm scoop it out at the kitchen counter to take it to the table, right? Excuse me, that, that soup has a harder time staying in there as I'm walking around, especially if you've got little kids. So things like that are spillable, like thing, bowls that are more vertical would be better. But 
let's push it out some more and let's see what happens. So here, let's just really push it this time. So really crank it down, right? So I'm really changing that curve. They're really flattening out the curve. So when I get now to the here, I just stop the middle. But when I get down to here where it's being supported, I have to slow down, push harder to get that curve to match. So here we go. Push, push, push. So I'm gonna concentrate here. I'm gonna spend more time here now, making sure that bowl flattens out a bunch. There, so this rib is maybe a little too big for what I'm trying to do, so I'll switch, switch to a smaller rib. So smaller ribs do different things, and I was having a hard time getting into this curve here. There we go. So I'm going to spend more time in here, kind of straightening this area out, because I have to push that clay down, because that clay from underneath, right, is pushing back. So let's take a look at that bowl. So that bowl is way more open now, right? So let's push it out one more time. And then we'll call it good. So let's push this down. Whoosh. Let's just fold this rim down and see. So let's, uh, yeah, so we can fold the rim down. Let's say we put a counter turn on it, right? So that's, a, once again, a much different bowl. And I only just changed the rim. So this, to me, is where you get to show off your stuff, right? Yeah, so someone just asked if I'm holding the rib at a slight angle. It, I'm holding it like this as I go down. So like this as I'm ribbing. So that way, do you see that? And then sometimes I hold it more vertical. So when the bowl was more vertical, I was holding it more like this and going down. But now since it's more open, I'm holding it flatter like this as I'm going down. So now, so see how this bowl is really open now and this rim goes flat. So what have I really done? This area here, as far as holding material, I've really lowered the volume that this bowl can hold. And now it's becoming so open that if I had to really carry some soup around inside, it gets a little bit more difficult. But let's now, instead of just flattening out the rim, let's flatten out the whole body. I'll switch back to a bigger rib since this form is so open now. I'll switch back to this wider, flatter rib, and I'll just go down like this. So let's just open this bowl up all the way. So my outside hand isn't doing anything. It isn't really pushing back, really. It's just there and feeling what's going on. It's like another set of eyes for the underneath part, and I can feel if the bowl starts wavering or starts collapsing right away. So here, I'm just pushing this bowl down. Now, if I was gonna make this bowl like this, I wouldn't have opened it so tall. I would have opened it much flatter. But I'm just showing you guys as a lesson how the bowl form can change and what how that could be. So somewhere, hopefully, in between here and there, there's a bowl that you liked, right? And then that's the place where you would have stopped making your stopped your changes. So let's fix this inside here. So like I said, if I were just going to make a bowl like this, I would have just gone directly to this shape. I would have opened it up flatter, pushed it down right away. Because all this stretching that I've done from that more vertical shape down to this open shape kind of stresses out the rim a little bit. And you can see that the rim got a little thin, right? I would have opened this up much flatter at the beginning so that the rim wouldn't end up so wide. So let's clean this up a little bit. There. So I'm cleaning up that rim. So since it already kind of has a fold there from before, let's just create a flat rim, flattish rim here, just for kicks. So here I'm just gonna put a break in that curve right there. So what does a rim really do? A rim, I always think about it, the rim of your plate, bowl, whatever, is really a frame for your food, right? It doesn't make the bowl hold more material. It just makes it look more fancy, right? like that. So I've just created a flat rim, a flat-ish rim, right? The rim, it's very difficult to make a completely flat rim there. So it's just as flat as I'm willing to make it for now. And then let's clean up that rim a little bit. It's pretty flat-ish. It's a little thin. Like if I knew I was going to make this, I would have thrown it thicker and left more material there. But as you stretch out your bowl, right, these edges get thinner. So just watch out for that too. So I'm going to undercut it. Uh, so this guy here, it's so deep down inside there. You see that? It's so deep. Wow, look how small that is. It's so deep in there. I can't really take out any clay by undercutting it at an angle. So I just take this guy, this little, uh, this guy, and I just jam it in there like this. I don't really try to remove, oh, there is some material trying to come out of there. And I generally don't try to remove any material. I just try to put that little slice down there so that when I rib it, it stays, it will come out. Now, also, if I really were going to try to make a form this wide, I would have left my mound wider down here to give it more support so it doesn't want to collapse as much. 
but this because this this sort of bowl wants to really collapse I was, so let me take this off and so let's trim one of these guys up all right so we're going to trim one right now too because we're just going to complete the whole process here all at once so here and then so this is the bowl i want to trim here so let's look at what what's going on when we're trimming so we have a bowl like this right but somewhere in there we're going to trim out leave the clay for the foot so what parts do we need to trim off this is that stuff that we need to trim off that black stuff right there and then we'll leave those two little pieces of clay remember that this thing is like spinning is like a circular thing in space so let's see if you didn't understand this let's look at this one so this if i cut this bowl in half boom we'll end up with something that looks like that, right? A continuous curve all the way around on the inside. Remember to throw the bowl for the inside because we are gonna trim the outside to look good. So I didn't really look too much at the outside. I was very concentrated on the inside of the other bowl. But then we're gonna trim off this part here, this part here, this part here, and then we'll end up with something that looks like that when we come back. So ideally like this is like your before and after shots of what's going to happen you see that so we trim off this part of the clay trim off this middle and then we trim off that bottom part Woo all right so let's do that all right so i am using a clay like b mix today um if you're familiar with that it's a it's a type of clay that has lots of ball clay in it so let's center this guy up so here we're going to uh, I do this thing called tap centering because it's faster and way more fun than just trying to center normally. I have a video about that. Um, you can look it up about tap centering where I talk about how to do tap centering. So here I get my three blobs of clay out. And then here I just plop them down and like this. Oh, I should look. Okay, so before I do that, let's look at thickness. I didn't really feel. So I just usually just jump right into these bowls because I already know exactly what I want to do because I throw them kind of the same every time. But let's check thickness. So normally it should be hopefully even, even, even from here on down, from this rim here down to here should be even-ish, right? Hopefully. But then when you start getting into this area here, we'll draw a little X there. That X area, maybe your bowl starts getting thicker. So I know that somewhere in that region, I'm going to start trimming off some clay. And then here, of course, I'm going to trim off a bunch then for my foot. If you can see when I undercut this, I undercut this a lot. I didn't really, that's already close to the width of my foot that I want to have. So my foot will be right around there somewhere. And then if you want to check for thickness, how much clay do you have left to trim? Like how thick is your bottom? Well, you could stab a needle tool through there. So let's do that. Uh, my needle tool is gone. Hmm. Needle tool left. All right, so you could stab a your needle. Here it is. So you could stab your needle tool through. So let's just, because this is still leather hard clay, if I really needed to, the CCC, I could just stab my needle tool through all, oh, all the way down, all the way down to the wheel and come back out. So I have that much clay to trim, right? So I could trim off about half that much and be okay. Or you can take a flat object like this, right? So a flat object like that and lay it on there like that. And then take another object like this. And I'm not going to poke a hole through there. I'm just going to hold this down in the bottom and measure from the top of this stick here down to the bottom and then measure out here. And I could see there how much space I have. And that's, that's the thickness that I have. So that's two different ways you can kind of get an idea for how much space you have. So here it's visual, right? I could really see how much space I have between here and there. Okay. So, so I know I could trim off about half that amount of clay and be okay. So this hole here is a problem right now, but I can just wet my finger and just rub it back and forth. And that hole usually isn't a problem, right? And so I've just rubbed that hole out and I got to remember that I'm going to trim into that hole. Oops, I'm going to trim into that hole on this side. And so I need to, maybe I need to rub that out when I'm done there. So the whole thing is pretty aggressive. Um, yeah, but I used to do it that way because I, you know, with the other way where you have to have a ruler or something and I often didn't have a flat object to check. There we go. So centered and now we'll step set this up so i use three blobs of clay to hold this down here we go two right so i figured that i wasn't going to watch the super bowl today 
And I figured we need, as potters, we need something to do. The non-Super Bowl watchers of us need something to do, right? And we should it should be a fun, enjoyable thing. So I figured I'd give everyone an opportunity to do a non-Super Bowl thing. If there are people watching Super Bowls in your house, you can get them started on watching. Everybody would be happy, and then you can watch this. All right, so here we go. Sure form tool, I talked about this in another video I made. It's basically like a cheese grater, but made for like construction workers and stuff. You can find it in the chisels area and it's basically it grates away the clay. So I use this a lot because it really takes off the clay pretty quickly. It's easy to hold on to. It's called a sure form, S-U-R-F-O-R-M. And it's made by Stanley. Find it in the hardware stores, at least here in the States. Look for the chisels area. So you can see that I'm already whacking off a lot of clay right there. That's really good. So I got to watch out because I don't have that much distance horizontally, right? I, if I trim this too narrow, my foot's going to end up super narrow. So I'm just going to stop there and trim maybe this part here. Because the sure form really takes off the clay kind of quickly. You'll see. So let's do it over here now. And it quickly and evenly. It's awesome. There we go. Dump that out. So now I'm going to switch to my regular trimming tool and start mapping out this what I want. So this is a, a Dolan tool. That's really nice. It's great for trimming. I love these tools. So here we're just going to start trimming away. So it's a little bit out of round. You see that? That drives me nuts. So we'll just quickly recenter. So this is a good thing about being able to tap center is you can... Wow, what's going on here? All right, we're going to knock it way off center and start over. There, that's good. That's a good thing about being on the tap center is I it's it, I can get it, take it off, and recenter it very quickly. So here we go. Back down and back down and back down. Here we go. All right, so now I'm going to go again. So just back to where I was when I left off, right? So... It's good that if you want to, if it isn't centered, go ahead and recenter it, right? Take the time to, to do it right. So here, this is in the area where I'm going to have the foot. Uh, when I trim this, I'm going to trim like a counter foot, a foot that has a kind of undercut direction. So like this foot, you see how it's undercut there, kind of cuts back at an angle. Or if you look at this foot here, it has the same thing. It kind of cuts back in at an angle underneath it's undercut that's what we're going to make right now so here so these tools are really good for that but i'm not going to do the undercut yet i'm just going to trim this part in i do the undercut near the end so i'm just going to trim this guy down right here there we go looking really good so now i'm starting to get close to this curve so where's my little x does my X still there? So I know that I want to trim down to about there, but as I get closer to the X, it's the less I need to trim because it's thicker here, but as it gets close, 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 close. So up X and above, I'm not going to trim, but X and below, I'm going to start trimming more and more and more and more. So I just know that as I get closer, right? And then also, I'm going to try to continue this curve around. So let's get a good side view of it, right? So as we look at it here, right, I'm going to trim this so that this has a beautiful curve coming in. It's like one continuous curve coming in. So this is a pretty good view. Let's stay like this for a little bit. So here, we're going to just trim away right here. So I'm getting close to the curve I want. It's still definitely too thick here. You can feel like a little whoop. So we're going to trim that down. Keep trimming away right here. There we go. So see, then you start getting close and then you get to start to wondering, am I close? Am I too far away? I don't know, right? But there's still a little bit of a hump here. And now I'm gonna start trimming down into that X area soon. So here we go. So you can see actually I started my undercut. And that's because this tool here is sharp on all three sides, sharp, sharp, sharp. So I can use this little vertical face to trim into that right there. Here we go. Trim, 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 trim. And there we go, trim, trim, trim. There we go, so I'm getting close, right? So now I'll start trimming down into this X area, right, right now. So you can see that that shape is starting to look pretty continuous, so we'll keep going. There we go. Yeah. All right. So 
that is getting close, right? And have I trimmed off? So the X is starting to get trimmed into. So we'll keep trimming. I'm gonna switch tools. To it. That one's a little dull or something. It's not quite trimming quite right. So we'll trim it off better, so much better. So I could always tell, so that tool needs to be sharpened a little bit. So there we go. So this one's trimming. I just has a little bit better control. So chattering and things like those sort of things happen sometimes because of the, the dullness or sharpness of your tools. Now I could come down in here and trim these th throwing lines out. We're gonna keep those today. So here I am here. And I think that just to finish this curve off, I think this part's looking really good. I think this part near the foot needs to trim down just a little bit. So it looks like the curve continues up and through and then back out. Right now it seems like too high, like they're meeting a little bit too high inside the foot. I want it to look like a really smooth, like it's possible to come all the way around and then back and then all the way around and back out again the other side, right? Comes up and then around and then back out the other side. That's what I want to have when I trim this. So I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit more right there. So there's always a danger, right? I could end up trimming through this Right, but I like to live on the edge. I like my I like to have what I want out of this, right? So I'm willing to trim it to to get what I want. So that looks so much better. And I may come back and trim this, but it's now time to start thinking about the inside of the foot. So for the inside of the foot, I switched to one of these guys here. Pick that up and get a slightly closer view on this action here. So then I just start from here and work my way out. There we go. So if this was, if this is going around like not even, I'll come back and just for this first couple trims at the top, I'll try to even it out just to try to make this bottom flat before I start trimming the foot. I got a lot of clay I can trim out from here. Like that's a pretty vertical distance. So I can really trim the inside of this out. There's a little hunk of debris there. Okay, here we go. Now we'll trim the inside. So I love trimming bowls because bowls have a really wide rim. Right, so you can be kind of aggressive on these when trimming. Like cups, you have to be very delicate, right? Because the cup is kind of tall and narrow. And all right, so the part I'm really worried about here is trimming down through the bottom here. Because remember that this bottom is the thinnest right here between here and there is the thinnest. But if I don't trim through there, I'm okay. So that I just got to be aware of that here, coming through here, trim, trim, trim. So then I'm also gonna check my depth here. Let's just check the depth with a straight edge. So it looks like I got plenty of space, but I would love it if that vertical, this empty space here between this and this was a little bit larger. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'm also thinking, trying to remember how much clay I had at the beginning, right, to trim off. So I'm gonna trim, keep trimming away, because I think I got more space now. Like I still got space to give. Maybe do one more time. There we go. So that's it for the middle. But as you know that this side is coming upwards, the inside is turning up. So I want to trim this part. I want to trim this part round here to match the inside curve. So I'm going to trim off more clay off of this part here, off this outside edge right here. So I'll leave this. So I create that dome going over. So I'm going to switch to the flat side for this. Actually, you know what? We'll switch back to this. This is a great tool for trimming that because this, this edge right here can trim this outside edge here now. So I just use that outside edge and trim that going out. Pretty cool. So, yep, someone said that was pretty cool how much I trim. I am kind of an aggressive trimmer. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I know that I didn't cut through this part of my bowl right, that this didn't puncture through. And I know I have a pretty consistent curve through there, and I'm pretty confident that this curve kind of matches the other side. So I could trim this part down to match this curve. I would love it if this curve da -da 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 comes in, and then there's a matching curve, da -da 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 -da, and it peaks there, and it starts heading back down, and then boop, pops out the other side. So I'm not there yet. I need to trim this part down more. And I know that this foot is too thick, but I'm gonna kind of sculpt it here in a second to get what I want. So there, so that's getting close. It still feels too high, but I'm gonna start narrowing this foot down because it's just way too chunky for this bowl. It just feels like a mm, kind of foot. Now, if this was gonna go in wood fire or something where it needs to be wadded, this may be the kind of foot that I leave, but this ain't going there. This is cone six clay. It's a cone six B-mix type clay. 
so it can be thinned out more because uh, it can easily handle a cone six firing. So I'm starting, I know that I'm gonna undercut this bull, this more here. So I'm also creating this undercut so it'll be parallel here, right? So if this is under, this is outer cut, I guess, right? So here I'm gonna start trimming that side there so that it is like kind of a matching curve to what I want. There we go. There. And that's a good thing about these tools that have these like square edges. I'm able to get a very nice tight corner and I love that tight corner there across right there. So I'm able to get a nice tight corner. This edge is still high, so I'm gonna trim this down some more here. There we go. Trim that edge down more so it fits the curve of what I think the inside, so it still seems high. We're gonna carve off more. Now, usually I'm much more aggressive when I trim, so I get to this point a lot faster, but I kind of want to show you the kind of different steps individually, right, as I do this. So it's getting close, right? So now let's work at the undercut on the outside. Before I get too carried away with this part, let's work on the undercut right here. So I'll come back in with this sort of guy. I like this more squared off trimming tool for this because it just, it just is the one I use the most. So here, we're gonna get you a good view there. And I'm gonna work this corner here under here and kind of bring that corner in to get the curve that I want or the angle that I want. There we go. So you see how that angle goes foomp? goes in and then comes back out again. I love that. So that's looking pretty good. I love that sharp counter angle. Because I trimmed a little bit into here, I can trim a little bit more off right here, down here. I'm focusing on that bottom part, not the vertical face right now. There, so that's feeling good. So now I'll come back and since I made some adjustments here, I'll make some adjustments here to this, to the inside part now. There we go. Oop, caught a little bit there. So it's feeling really groovy. So you see how there's like a hump here and that's what I want. Cause I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that that matches the hump on the inside of my bowl. So you see how it looks like hump, 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 hump comes in. And it just looks like this is kind of in the way and that curve just continues out the outside. Boom, continue, continue, continue. And then comes out the other side. So that's looking good. So I'm there, I'm just gonna do a couple of cleanup things just to make sure everything kind of matches up. So I'll feel with my finger if there are any lumps or anything. Uh, so that's part's okay. There's some lumpiness here that I'll smooth out before I call this done. Just smooth, smooth, smooth. So I'm just going through here and just trimming just a little bit off all the way around. Just trying to create a humpiness that's smooth. So now I'm gonna round off the foot. So what am I doing when I round off the foot? Well, um, very important to me. So what I'm gonna do is put a round bottom on. So let's just set it on there since it's, since it's nice. So here, I'm gonna trim this bottom round. And what am I doing there? What I'm doing is I create a round, kind of almost semi-circular surface right here. Not doing such a good job with focusing because maybe I'm too close. So, and then what I do is where, and then it has a break. So it goes vertical and it breaks to round. Where that vertical break happens is the part that I leave unglazed, right? So here, unglaze and then unglaze there, you see that? And so I have a very clean line to, to leave unglaze all the way around. So let's show you that. So here, that doesn't have that yet. This is kind of this angle thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this so it's almost semi-circular here. So trim, 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 trim. So I'm gonna round this off like that. So you see how I'm kind of rounding that off there. There we go, like that. There we go. So I just keep rolling my tool kind of back and forth, kind of knocking it into round. There, good. So now it's almost round, but you see how there's a break in the curve right here. So this kind of comes up straight and then there's like a break and it starts going round. So you see that break right there is where I'm going to stop my glaze and start my thing. Now that's a little bit sharp break because I'm worried about this being a little bit of a sharp corner. I'm going to round that corner off some just to make it so it's less chance of getting broken on the counter or something. Oh, that's much better. And then I'll just come back. So this is a little dry. So I'm just going to wet it just a little bit with my fingertip. 
just to wet it down and then I'm just gonna roll this guy around there just to take my rib and really help smooth and compress this down. Because remember, this part's not gonna get any glaze. So if we look at this here from this, so this part right here, this line right, this line right here is where I'm not, I'm gonna unleave that part, that part from down, from that line down will be glazed. From that line here to there, inside will be unglazed. And then this part line from here up will be unglazed. From here down will be glazed. So that just makes it easier for me to put wax on. Also, if I don't put wax on, I get glaze on the bottom. It's really easy to wipe off. All right. The last thing I got to do is look at that. What's that right there? That's my hole from when I poke through, right? So then I'm going to um, just take my wet finger and rub that hole out. And then I would use a, my signature on here, put my signature on here and I'd be done. So let's take a look at it, how it looks. So it should look really good now. So you see that on the inside there, on the outside there, you could see how it looks, right? So that's like I'm looking pretty good. So the inside and outside kind of match up kind of both ways. All right, so awesome. So if you have any questions, just post them in the comments later or whatever, and I'll try to answer them, right? Ah, enjoy your Sunday.